it's aluminum oxide and titanium dioxide. As it cools, it'll uh, change color to blue, um, at least uh, in theory. I'm using a very crude method. A uh, very crude method to do uh, flame fusion of uh, aluminum oxide doped with uh, titanium dioxide for synthetic sapphire and um, chromium 3 oxide for ruby. Uh, don't know how this batch is going to turn out. I'm still experimenting with mixtures. Uh, I'm just doing uh, mix ratio by, uh, by weight. So, yeah, we'll see how this uh, this looks. Um, it does have a blue, which is kind of hard to tell here on the video, but uh, I'm just going to let it continue cooling down. I'm um, just using a MAP Oxy torch. Uh, it's able to reach well above uh, the temperature required to fuse alumina. Um, however, there's going to be a lot of hydrocarbon uh, contamination. Uh, it still is able to form the bowl. Uh, but you're not going to be able to grow uh, synthetic ruby or sapphire using the method that I'm doing uh, to test this whole setup out. Um, I'm building a Vernwell furnace, or however it's pronounced. Um, I'm still in the design stages, but I've been working on some homemade refractory ceramics that can hold up to over the 2,000 degrees Celsius um, heating. Uh, it's got to withstand that type of uh, temperature range for approximately five hours to be able to grow a bull. Um, and uh, it's tricky because you have to keep the flame tip just at the very surface of uh, the bull where it's forming and, and, and it can't boil. <laughs> so you, you just have to melt it and it's got to be just slightly above the melting point and below uh, boiling otherwise you get a lot of gas bubbles stuck in there um, under the microscope i can see you know quite a few bubbles when uh, i'm doing this uh, i've created some synthetic ruby that actually it turned out pretty decent on the last batch and um, i'm using pretty pure oxides that uh, i bought online i'm using uh, i believe it's region grade uh, but I know the titanium dioxide is about 99.99% pure uh, and the same uh, with the aluminum. I, I think the aluminum oxide might be like 98.5 or, or something like that. It's 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 fairly pure, but uh, I don't know. I'll have to check on uh, the, the purity of the aluminum oxide. Um, but yeah, I'm just uh, going to continue performing tests. Um, and once I get to the point of actually assembling the Vernuel furnace, uh, you know, I'll be uh, video. Uh, I'll be videoing that entire process. So for now, this is. Uh, I'm just having fun experimenting, trying to find uh, the exact uh, mixtures uh, or the you know the ratios for the the mixtures to get the best color. I've also experimented with uh, uh, combining titanium dioxide with uh, chromium 3 oxide and I did end up with like a dark purple uh, cluster of uh, poles so it's pretty neat. Um, I've got a really nice blue one but it's unfortunately it's it's microscopic. Uh, I do have a picture up on it um, but uh, yeah, I want to see how these ones turn out and you know it may be the same thing it's, it seems like the titanium dioxide is a little more finicky than uh, chromium oxide. I'm, I'm guessing it's got a higher melting point. I'm, I'm, I have to look more into that. I only just started fooling around with the titanium dioxide, and that's because I've had the chromium oxide for, I think, about two weeks now. So I've had a longer time to experiment with it. Anyhow, I'm going to end this now because this has got to be quite a boring video to watch. Thanks for watching.